जयपुर अहमदाबाद दिल्ली में आपका स्वागत लखनऊ जंक्शन हेलो एंड वेलकम टू क्रिक बाज लाइव आई एम सयमी खेर आई एम नॉट ओवर वॉट वी एव विटनेस यस्टडे एंड दिस एम मिस्टर जॉय भट्टाचार्य हु सेड समथिंग इन आर ब्लॉग्स दैट टू सेवेंटी सेवन वॉन्ट बी ब्रीच्ड वी गॉट दैट मिस्टर जॉय भट्टाचार्य इन दिस सीट बट जॉयदा यू कॉन्ट यू नो टेक दिस सो हार्ड अपॉन योर सेल्फ हैदराबाद वॉज जस्ट इन अ मूड टू बी इन अ हरी टू ब्रेक दर रिकॉर्ड so you can't take this prediction I mean, too hard on yourself no no i'm not taking anything hard on myself yeah. i just it's 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 a year of unbelievable things happening one <laughs> after another so i'm just getting on to this ride and just watching this amazing journey but you know someone who knows a thing or two about getting predictions very wrong uh. joins us in the studio for the <laughs> first time back on that side of the chair is paul me embangwa <laughs> oh it's about me <laughs> talking about you paul me i thought with the rajasthan game you won't laugh <laughs> because we all know what happened last season don't we Can't so now you. you and joyda next to each no, other no no uh, the you are you starting a show i mean just ask the producer would you just ask the producer are we being paid to be trolled <laughs> 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 you know, there are certain news channels that have these guys from other countries Correct. who are there to be abused. You know, they'll come and they'll be abused. They told, "You're idiots. You don't do this." I think they're paying us for that. In that case, the producer, sir, I'd like a little bit more money. A two cm, you as well. I two really, Brutus. I, I really. And I thought I had a friend here, but oh, oh no! I'll give you some sea salt ice cream and make up for the trolling right oh, now. I'll wow, make up with wow. good food. I'll, I'll do look, that. I'm, I'm easy to buy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for me, mm-hmm. uh, RR playing today. They've won the toss and they're going to be bowling first. Uh, memories of what happened last time. We'll not get there too much. We won't get there too much because it's okay. we've played it's this okay. out. We've played this out time and time again. But because you're here for the first day on Crick Buzz Live, uh, back on that side of the chair, we're going to do some uh, quick uh, fire questions with sure. you. Sure. Uh, because uh, Rajasthan KKR taking on each other, and uh, they're both at the top of the table. Uh, so let's start with what do you, what have you liked in both Rajasthan and KKR this season? Um. just the consistency i guess uh, and and you watch various teams at the start of the tournament and often it's about trying to work out you know which is their best team are they going to stick with people or are going to are they mm. going to shift and shift until they find who they think it is and you don't know uh, whether they have it's a case of are you winning or are you losing but Uh, I guess it can be made easier by and I'm talking here in the case of KKR you spend a lot of money on someone and you think well they've got to be playing yes. it could have been quite easy early in the tournament after a couple of games maybe even three games you just said well not so sure about Mitchell Stark let's mm. you know move him to the side try somebody else but no stuck with him and now he's coming good um that case is the same for Rajasthan Royals not so much in terms of buying a, a you know a lot of players but they are big name players in Jaiswal and Butler and I know Butler got 100 but they haven't kicked off in the way that they normally kick off and there's been no need to shift the team mm. because the team itself is winning so they've stayed you know consistent in terms of their selection and I've, I've enjoyed that just a a backing of of your original first 11 Joyda you agree with Gambhir coming in just backing the 11 that's been winning them game Yeah see that's the point you see if you look at today all teams have good talent scouts all teams have champion i mean they have enough good players to win a championship mm-hmm. the truth is the difference is how you put these pieces together and how consistently you play them Correct right. What did it require it just requires one or two changes mm-hmm. it doesn't require wholesale changes So what have they done they've got Narayan back on top they've got salt there and they're saying okay we're going to back you for five mm-hmm. matches It may not be 14 matches. We'll back you for five matches. It's worked. The moment it works, things become easier. Why could they also afford to carry somebody like a Stark? 
because the team is winning. Yes. If the team is winning, you can carry anyone. And see, that is the one great advantage. These teams are looking consistent. I mean, the team selection is looking consistent because teams are winning as well. They don't need to make changes at this point in time. And I think those little changes that they've made, you know, Parag coming in at four. We were talking about this before that, you know, that's where he bats most of his time in domestic cricket. So that little change has made a huge difference yes. to the team. Sunil Aran at eight is wasted. They've got him up front. If he works, he works. If he doesn't, it doesn't matter. So which move do you like better? Riyan Parag uh, coming up ahead or uh, do you like, uh, uh, like Shreya Sayar and where he's batting? Look, I... Different teams, different things, right? Um, the move that works is the one we like all the time. We say, this works, is great. So, Riyam Parag batting at four, to me, says, stick with the guy because you might decide somewhere down the line. It was time to toss him away. But that's actually when all the learning has been done. It takes a long time. Mm. And that's what's happened. We've known he's always been talented. Yes. So, fantastic. And I'm so happy to see him. Still with a smile on his face, still um, the sort of cocky guy who enjoys his cricket and now getting runs as well. Fantastic. And in the spin department, which team has, uh, which combination has worked better? Ash uh, and Chahal or uh, Narayan and Chakravati? I think this year Narayan has been particularly devastating. And I think just they're that inch ahead, I think. I mean, Chahal is bowling as well as he's mm. ever bowled. But then what does Chahal need to do to get onto a World Cup or to play for India again? Nobody knows. He's just the best <laughs> bowler in the country. That's all. I mean, but what else can he do? Just, just a little toss <laughs> that out there. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of tossing we do with the World Cup yeah. there. Purple caps, yes. this thing. What else can he what do? He, yeah. he can't do anything more. I mean, now he can only... Maybe he needs to start opening bat or something. Oh, he, or yeah. he needs to pilot, you know, he needs to drive the team bus. Do you want him to drive the team bus? Or start wicket keeping okay, because, yeah, there's, because uh, whole, that's, that's, yeah. there's nothing else he can do. So, yeah, I'd say just at this point in time, Chakravarti and Narayan a bit ahead. Also, very interesting that Soya Sharma, who's an excellent... Mm. The other thing Kolkata is doing well this year is, they're saying, okay, this is what I have, this is what I'm sticking to, it's winning. They don't feel the temptation to tinker yeah. immediately and put in a Suyash. So, he's a brilliant bowler and there are places where three spinners might just work for them. Okay, then this is quickly prediction because we've got Predi both of you. You're going to got make us yeah. predict yeah. again. Yes, I predict again. Best that you know. Predict wow. again because this is a table topper, right? One right, and two. Okay. So, your prediction on who's going to be on the top at the end of today's day. Oh, that's it's what It's going to be tight, yes. Yeah, I, I'm going with Rajasthan. I'd say, I'd say Kolkata has an advantage because they're playing on home yes. ground. But uh, the only thing I'd say is it's, it's almost equal now because winning the toss is a big thing. Mm. Kolkata, I know this had a thunder shot two, three days back, but it's got humid again, which means you expect dew afterwards. So, mm. which means that may be a little bit of an equalizing factor, but I'd mm. still say Kolkata by a whisker. Well, Joy Bhattacharya, we all know who he is going to say by a whisker. Yeah, There's no surprise there. there. There's no surprise there at not all. True, you know, not things, true, not for true. me, things don't change at Cricket Buzz Live, do the they? More no, things all the more change, same. the more they stay. The Look, same. wait a minute. In the preview show, I said Rajasthan is one of the two teams who are sure to qualify, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Kolkata had a question mark. So there. In the preview show, you didn't give anyone qualification, Joy. That we've all seen the preview. You just I given two thumbs up. We have one of them was Rajasthan. One of them was Rajasthan. Okay, so one of them, well, Rajasthan. Like I said, have won the toss. They're going to be bowling first. And uh, Shreya said he would have liked to bowl as well. Joyda, like you said, the dew could be a factor. But Shreya, the captain has been doing very well for them. Four out of five games, everything going pretty much the way he wants to as a captain. But Shreya, the batter, you know, strike rate is something we always discuss on Crick Buzz. The last game, run a ball for him. But because he was chasing, he got the side across the finish line. But would you like to see him just going faster? See, there are two things. Firstly, I tend not to look at strike rate while chasing, mm. especially in successful chases. Because what does that mean? It means you're doing whatever it takes to get you across the line. So, at that point in time, if Phil Salt has got going and hammered the opposition and, you know, the top three batsmen have got runs, I can go to run a ball. It doesn't matter. I'm still winning comfortably. And that's the point that I would only look at strike rate in two circumstances. One is when you're target setting. Okay, And that too, it depends on how the other guy at the other end is going. If you are in a situation where wickets are falling and all, it's difficult to do. So, in the Chennai match, he got stuck. So, my point is that I will only judge shares. Today would be a good day to judge shares mm. if the openers don't go off to a you know mm. great start. Otherwise, the openers are doing so much that shares doesn't need to do. So, right now, I think he's concentrating on the captaincy, knowing that 
the day will come when they'll really need shares the batter. Yes. At this point in time, they don't need shares the destroyer in the middle order. Mm. And remember, he gives them something very few other guys do. He's probably at this point in time, one of India's finest players of spin. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have situations where he's going to be very vital to you. So it's good. He's He's got a 38 ball, 38. He's got time in the middle. But he doesn't need to go to 160 when Russell and Salt are going the way they are. Narayan is going the way he is. He doesn't need to do it right now. You know, like he'll you said, because... To, he'll want to. Because mm. uh, uh, I think players these days have a look at that strike rate a lot. And, and true. just like us when we sit here and people will look at strike rates and go, oof, that's not necessarily good enough. The problem, and this is where I totally agree with you, Joy, is is you can't look at it in isolation. Every time you look at players and you take their stats and you look at them in isolation, you don't have perspective. Mm. So it might not look like, oh, this is not a T20 strike, right? Yes. But it's winning the game. It's just making sure you get over the line because all the work has been done before. So you've got to make sure each time you're looking at anyone, put it in context. Mm. What happened on the day? And then that's when you can judge. So I'll just, I'll just take you back to you know what happened a few days back with Jaydev Unatkat. Mm. Jaydev Unatkat was defending 28, they scored 26. Okay, Everyone looked at it and said he gave 26. And you know, mm. the truth is, Two catches were tipped over the boundary. One fell short. He caught it and he, he couldn't get it. Two sixes over the boundary. There was one genuine six that was hit. He perfectly executed. It didn't happen. The last ball was hit for six. It didn't matter. By that time, you, they needed eight to win. So the truth is, you look at that and you say, what terrible bowling. And you don't think about the tips that have happened in the boundary. You don't see the drop catch out there. You don't see that he bowled perfectly yes. to the field that he set. No, nah, but it, 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 look at this. Twin 28, they need to get, they get 26, what happens? Do you lose? As long as no. you win the game. You win yeah. the game, as that's the job. The, the job is win the game. Mm. Uh, the rest is surplus to requirement. It's overanalyzing things. And yes, he'll go back and he'll want to, oh, I need to bowl this better or I need to bowl that better. But the result at the end of the day is not what you can control, right? Like in terms of you let the ball go and if it goes where you want, that's it. If the guy still manages to hit it for six and it's where you want, maybe then what you must address is what you're choosing to try and bowl rather than the fact that it went for six, right? So, yeah, as I say, I think today my word is going to be perspective. Let's mm. get the full picture, not just a little corner of the picture and decide that's kind of how reality is. It, it's not necessarily. But Pommy, like you said, you know, it plays on the player's mind as well. We saw this graphic, which is very interesting because Shreyas' uh, strike rate in comparison to everyone else. Obviously, everyone else is doing the power hitting up at the top, but this will be playing on his head. He's at 120, while everyone is striking at like 150, 183, 212. So that will play on his mind. Yeah, look at those players. So Salt... Narine, open power play. Russell, back of yes. the game. Must they must play that way? What is Shreyas Ayer's role in the side? It's not go and swipe it and hit it out the ground. Yeah. It's listen. You've got to come in here and you've got to be the glue of this side and make sure that we get over the line. So what do you need to do? And so he has to be adaptable. There'll be days mm. when he must turn up and he must strike. At okay. a high strike rate because that's what's necessary. And there'll be days when he's got to come in and say, look, not in, in test match parlance, I shut up shop, make sure mm. that we just get over the line. Mm. Yes, in quick time, run a ball is the minimal mm. and that's what I'll do. And he's going 120. So no, that's okay. Mm. And like Joy says, if at the other end there's a Russell, there's a Rinku, there's a Phil Salt, there's a Narine then the job is being done properly. You're probably winning with five overs to spare yes. anyway because of how quickly these guys are going. But because a new batter's come in, you don't want to open that door on that side to you swipe as well. Mm -hmm. Another new batter comes in, tries to play the same way, then you let your opposition in. So there's still very much a case of situational mm -hmm. decision-making yes. and batting or bowling to ensure that the ultimate result mm. is what you get, which is a win. Yes. And so that's, I think, personally, yeah, we know how quickly he can bat. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this is. It's a case of there are some situations that need him to play a certain way. And so the strike rate's not necessarily as high as it might be. You know, we, we know that he can move from third gear to sixth gear. He's spoken himself saying he's taken on the anchor's role. So yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And as I said, his time will come. 
if KKR has to win a championship this year, he has to contribute at some point in time. Remember one more thing. All these pitches that you see are going to get older and more tired. It's a long season. Okay, Come May, the ability to pay spin is going to be a huge factor. Yeah. The amount of spin you're going to see is going to be a huge factor. We'll have a look at uh, Rajasthan's playing 11 because you spoke about the spin and we know they've got that spin duo in. Uh, Ashwin comes in and uh, Maharaj sits out. So that's one change and uh, uh, Butler is uh, not in here but I think he will be in the impact. So, uh, Jodha, you surprised because well, Maharaj had two good games. So. No, I think Maharaj had two excellent games but see, I think what they do very well right now is their balance. And what happens is that you get that international player in so, if they have Robman Powell and Hetmeyer and Bolton, remember they've been playing this formula very well. Yes. The three player formula where you have three out here and then you do the fourth sub and you sub it the way you want to, mm. depending on the situation. But definitely out here you'll see, uh, I mean, this is, their, this is their bowling 11. This is their bowling 11. We'll have a look at their impacts as well uh, because uh, Joss Butler is in their impact list. So, we'll see him coming in obviously in the second innings, uh, Pommy. Yeah, the expectation is that he, he would come in. Um, in, in, unless something went terribly wrong during the bowling. But uh, with the way that it's set up, that's the man who's going to come in. Um, Joss Butler got that 100 and uh, wonderful pictures they were then with, with, uh, with it yes. Maya at the other end <laughs> celebrating. But yeah, they're a team that are going well. And they're a team that are going well without necessarily the big guns having fired, fired mm -hmm. in the way that they'd like last season. It was a case of starting really well, everybody firing, and then going off the boil and they fell off a cliff. Mm. So they don't want that to happen. Also interesting, the fact that they've basically, the big choice they've made now is Rovman Powell over Nandre Berger. Mm -hmm. So which tends, tends to tell you that they're looking at, they think Kolkata will go big no matter what the attack is because they've decided to go with an all-rounder as opposed to a pure, pure bowler like Nandre Berger is. And that's interesting about their choices, about what they're looking at, how they're seeing this pitch. It's very interesting. Let's have a look at KKR's playing 11 and see if they have any changes. Uh, again, they're someone who's not shifted the side too much. They've been going ahead with their playing 11. So, uh, no surprise there that they go ahead. By, you know, they wouldn't want to tinker around a winning combination. No, no, they don't. And see, this is, this is very, very Gotham. Yeah. But, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They have a solid team. And the one thing that he always does... And if you remember, it's, it's so interesting because you go back and you, uh, you know, you hear statements of players who've played for him at LSG, mm -hmm. okay, like in Ayush Badoni. And Badoni is now playing for, I mean, against, but he's, the statement he made was, he clearly tells you, Gautam Gambhi, mm -hmm. that you're going to get five matches. It doesn't matter. So, Raghavanshi knows. Yeah. He's not worrying at night. He's sleeping at night knowing he's got to come good. He's got to get enough of a chance. And I think that's what Gautam has done very well. He's calmed this team down. Mm. They're not making, suddenly making, you know, arbit impulsive decisions, suddenly changing something, playing 14 openers in, you know, 14 opening combinations in two years. Mm -hmm. They're not doing those things yes. anymore. And that's why, because the man is in charge. You know, you said that because every time I see KKRs playing 11, I realize that this season what has worked for them is they don't have 14 op opening combinations. The last season, we just kept seeing new openers. We thought the next now, Joyda is going to go and open yeah. because they just kept getting someone new every time. Yeah. But yeah, 12, in fact, the, the, the doorman is this thing was asked because he's the most consistent opener. <laughs> <laughs> and the, and the Bangla was asked. Revolving door. <laughs> 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 but well, Phil Salt has come and answered that question and the move of course to get Sunil Narayan has really worked. But Phil Salt and just how destructive he can be because uh, if I get the numbers right, I think 95 games out of 188 that he's played, he started off with a 6 or a 4. So he's somebody who just completely derails bowlers and the numbers reflect here. Yeah, he's he's fantastic as a as a <coughs> headstrong, courageous opening batter, and is exactly the type of player for this format mm -hmm. of the game when it is played in its most modern fashion, which is what's happening now as you look around, and particularly also with the impact sub, where you then get guys are told, hey, listen, you can't waste any deliveries because we have the option. Yes down the bottom of adding another batter. So be as impactful as you can as the guy who gets to open. And he needs no second invitation, Phil Salt, because a boundary after boundary, he'll go after it. And 
his consistency, I think, is what is absolutely fabulous. Mm -hmm. you, you know, there are guys who can whack the ball, but intermittently, right? And as a bowler as well, you're sort of thinking, yeah, you can whack it, but I'm going to bowl there, and you're not going to consistently hit that out the yes. ground. He can, and he does it at the top of the order. So, yeah, a real valuable asset to have got and to have arrived at he's the guy who should play. Sometimes because... He's not necessarily the big star mm -hmm. um, for England, perhaps. You might think, oh, maybe don't play him. And so management has to kind of look at the numbers and see that, hey, 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 hey. what about these numbers? Mm -hmm. This guy <laughs> deserves a go because if he can give us just a little bit of what he's given us here in his body of work, we're going to be yeah. doing well. And that's what's happening for, for KKR this season. Yeah. You know, Joy the Phil Salt is someone who, like uh, Pommy is talking about. He just doesn't let the bowler settle in. So he said that he likes to aim at getting at least 10 runs and more in the, in the first over to derail the bowler. And that's kind of his strategy when, strategy when he goes. Yeah, yeah, I think he has an amazing first over strike rate. It's, I think, among the top three in the world, he's the second highest. And I think the guy who's third is the guy who is Kolkata's opening man before him, Jason Roy. There's one other very interesting thing. I mean, if you look at it, where is where does Phil Salt play county cricket? He plays for Lancashire. Mm. Lancashire's standard wicketkeeper batsman would have been Josh Butler. Mm. So Butler goes on international duty. Somebody else gets a chance, and now Phil Salt goes and you know really makes that role his own. Now he's also pushing for England honours and has played for the country as well. So it's very interesting. Butler movie. I mean, having so much to play for the country for the Lions has actually opened up Salt's county career in that sense. And I think he's just taken, that's the thing, that when you get opportunities like that, grab them. And I think mm -hmm. I just find it fantastic the way he's grabbed it, too. the way he plays and uh, how he set the tone with him and Narayan, you have the tone set yes. for the team. You spoke about him and Narayan because there is Phil Salt who strikes at, like you said, top three in the world. And then there's Sunil Narayan who knows only one way. He doesn't waste any balls. He's there only to attack. The, the beauty about having Sunil Narayan, and many will look and say, how many times are you going to try this? And Joy, you said it earlier. Oh, it doesn't matter you know, if he gets out and he doesn't contribute. Yes. But if he does, one, he's not going to waste any balls and the impact is mm -hmm. going to be huge. So what it does is it lengthens an already lengthened batting mm -hmm. order. And by that, I mean with an impact sub. Let's remember that he doesn't get into the side, Sunil Narayan, if he doesn't bowl mm -hmm. and bowl as well as he does. So because he's in the side as a bowler, you can use him as an all-rounder and you lengthen what's already a long batting lineup. You wait with an impact sub. He goes up at the top. You might not need to use your impact sub whilst you bat, and you can therefore use it for bowling later on because he's done his job uh, or he's managed to do a job of bashing um, the bowling up at the top and away you go. So, yeah, it's a, it, it's a good way to use him, but it also requires calmness within the change room, calmness within the batting yeah. lineup in terms of management and coaching to understand that being one down doesn't actually mm -hmm. matter. So let's take for granted that we'll be one down, but when we're one down, game starts for us. Mm. Exactly. And... The whole thing is, could they have done it before impact sub? Perhaps they would have thought a little bit more. With impact sub, one down. Hey, it's, it's, he's right. It's calmness. It's all sitting out there. Otherwise, see, wickets always call splutters in the you know, dressing yes. room, in the dugouts especially, you know, sitting out there. Somebody's padded up. But you've just got to say that he's going to come off, he comes off, he doesn't, he doesn't. And if, you, if Gotham has that in hand, then they'll be fine. Well, they both know how to strike really hard, but someone... On the other side, knows how to strike in every power play. The last three games, he hasn't. But Trent Bolt just comes in and does Trent Bolt things. So, there is someone who is uh, really attacking on one side with KKR. And then there's Trent Bolt and the numbers say what they say. Also, the last game, I think, uh, Stark did very well. So, left arm, we know he got three wickets. So, we know what we can expect from Bolt, uh, Pommy. The, the consistency. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, like everybody knows that when you come up against Trent Bolt, he's going to try and swing it up at the front. He's going to try and hit your pad. He's going to hit your stumps. He can also run across you if you're right-handed and nick mm. you off. But he's just trying to get you out. That's what's going to happen. And so you prepare, but season after season, wonderful players are undone by this guy. 
And I mean, as I say, the consistency is something to behold. And it is really kudos to him. He's been fantastic. He was fantastic for Mumbai. He's fantastic for these guys. Brilliant to have. And it won't be too many games where he won't get a, a, a wicket or two, mm. by the way, up at the front to set whoever it is back. And Rajasthan, no doubt, will be hoping it's tonight that he can do that. You know, Jyotha, like he's saying, is someone as world class as Rohit Sharma also. They're always waiting for the one that comes in. So with Trent Bolt, that's always playing on a batter's mind, right? If you're the right-hander, you're always yeah. playing for the ball to come in. So your tendency to nick off is also there because then you're playing inside yeah. the line. And that's one thing that, you know, Bolt does so well. And Bolt, remember, has played for Kolkata. Mm -hmm. He's played in this ground for a couple of years. So he understands the conditions out here. Uh, the breeze will suit him. The evening breeze will suit him. It, it, this is a good pitch for him to bowl. This is a pitch that, you know, assists a bit, you know, gives the pacers a bit in the beginning. And he's really going to enjoy it. And this, that is the battle because mm. neither of these guys are going to turn around and say that, let's play bowl time. Correct, mm. correct. They're not going to play him out. So, it's going to be fireworks right at the top. Mm. And that's what we all want to see. Yeah, and, and it's important in, in, in kind of the trying to decide the game it's important that first battle, mm. right? The beginning of the game, the power play battle is can these openers get away or can the bowlers make sure they punch a hole in this batting lineup to say, oh, we set you back a little bit. You're not going to be scoring 270 <laughs> again or have your way and score 75 or whatever it is in the power play. That's the battle at the beginning that kind of says, right, here's the start of the game. And once that's done, then there's a whole new game yes. that begins. You know, mm -hmm. who wins that? Is it even? Is it not? What happens? Then we see what happens in the rest of the game. And all those spinners that are on both sides, mm -hmm. they come into the game as well. So we've got these phases that yes. are fabulous to kind of watch. And as this gets unfurled, there's just more and more that you're looking mm -hmm. forward to because there are different battles that are going on within the great big war, as it were. You know, Joy Das said that Bolt has played uh, for KKR. There's somebody, every time you see KKR's team, there's this one permanent name there. And that's Andre Russ because he's been playing for, I think, what, over 10 years, Joyda. And he's just constantly been there in that team sheet. And reason enough why, because I think in like 872 batters in T20Is uh, who've got over 1,000 runs, Andre Russ strikes at 169. How can you be so consistent striking that high all the time? Just just pure power. Pure power and timing, the amount of strength and power. And the point of it is, what I'm loving about it is that Andre Russell is fitter today mm. than I saw him in 2014. When he was in 2014 and he liked, uh, you know, the Indian, the Jamaican rums, he's a different, I mean, the amount of time he's spending on fitness, he's looking leaner, he's looking thinner, he's got his body under control. He's looking far less bulky. Mm. He's looking strong, but not bulky. And he's in the best shape he's ever been. And I think I, I love the way he's playing now. And it's always fantastic to see players, you know, going through their careers and reinventing themselves. Yes. And I think he's reinvented himself. I also think he's not a just a smasher of the ball. That 194 strike rate is absolutely fantastic. But he's not a blind striker. Mm. He doesn't hit at everything. He's not Sunil Narayan, for example. He's a smart striker. Mm. He sees it. He plays the conditions according to him. It's just that his strength is so much that when he hits it, it looks brute power. But there is a thinking man behind that brute power. Mm. And he cannot be as successful as he is just trying to hit the every Correct. ball out of the ground. But Pommy, you think with Rinku by his side, kind of takes that pressure off as well? Because as someone who's striking so high at the other end, so Anirasa almost feels like a little more relaxed? I think it would be hard to make and Andre Russell relax more. <laughs> I can tell you that as well. The guy's Jamaican. You're going to get him to relax more? No chance. I get what you're saying, though. I, I, think, I think the pressure is not all on him. Yes. I think the way he will look at it is he's got to be the man to do it because he's Dre Russ. He's, that's why he's paid the big bucks. That's why he's a draw card. So he wants to be the guy to do it. Uh, the fact that Rinku can also do it, yes, it eases that mm -hmm. pressure a little bit. But I think if you looked at both of them and you kind of spoke to them separately, they would each say, this is my job and I've got to execute it. And that's what you want in the setup. You don't want a case where 
oh, it's a bit easier for me or whatever. From a mental perspective, it, it might yeah. well be and might help psychologically for them to then play better because there are more guys who can do that job. But each of them, each time they go out, no doubt are wanting to be that guy on the day. Well, you said uh, this is their job and they want to execute it. We have a job <laughs> which we have to execute on Crick Buzz Live as well. I'm going to let it all go to Joyda because we are very bad at executing this job, but we'll attempt it every day. It's about the attempt, isn't it? So, Joyda, the joy factor okay, question of Dilip the day. Okay, Dilip Sardar, this is a very famous Indian cricketer who dismissed Dilip Sardesai in his last test innings and then took the wicket of his son, Rajdeep Sardesai, who's also oh. played for Oxford in the latter's debut first-class innings. So, Rajdeep Sardesai has also played first-class cricket for Oxford. And of course, he's a very famous mm. anchor and a news person, you know. But uh, this man took both his fa the father's last wicket and his in tests and his son's first wicket in first class cricket. No idea. The question is just very interesting. I have no idea. Paul, me? Yeah, I, I, I'm reading and I, I think I need to try and get where he was and what he was trying to relate <laughs> it to. Yes. And then I'd be able to, to kind of go in the right direction. But yeah, we'll give it some thought. We'll give it some thought. We yeah. need to now give thought to our ah. other job. Yes. The prediction. Big job. It's a big job oh. because this time, Pommy, this is your first day. We've gotten very serious with this game. Yes, We've I, got on, a leaderboard. Hold on, hold on. You've, you've gotten serious. It's very yeah. serious. <laughs> We're We're not this, serious. This is here. serious no. business. <laughs> okay. Serious business. Okay, okay. We've got a leaderboard because the senior statesman Gaurav Kapoor said, I want a leaderboard. He's at number two. And uh, Viru's gone up that chart. So today is your first day, so you go first for me. Gee whiz, those guys are horrendous on the right <laughs> hand side. I'm looking at the right hand, they're choosing everything wrong. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh because I'm so bad at this. Okay, what am I, what am I predicting in terms of a score? The score at the first innings. Mm, first innings score, I'm going to go for 202. Okay. I was thinking 191. Now I'm suddenly under pressure. I was thinking much more, but I'll go for it. 202, 191. I will go with 214. Okay. Oh. I'll go up. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Oh. We've got quite a spread out here. Yeah? We've got a spread. I think someone will win today. That's uh, important. I'd like to say that I think I've influenced you all, but that's okay. Well, I want to give you all this news also. Mm. When we were doing our predictions, Rian Parag's dropped a absolute sitter and Salt has been given a life. Can so, you readjust? No, no. Re no <laughs> readjusting. <laughs> no readjusting. So, like I said, it's, a, it's serious business here. It's very serious. So, we'll wait and watch and uh, see if they manage to reach 214. <laughs> 191 and 202 and uh, because I started with a little bit of trolling now I have to feed Joyda and Pommy <laughs> some very good food so we'll go and do that we are waiting on that don't forget to join us at the 10 over point at the Crick Buzz Com box <laughs> Hyderabad Express, Bangalore Station, Data Deep Mobile. Here, Bangalore.